welcome our other presentation about uh, next generation OER. So today we're going to talk about how to take and move beyond the basics on uh, student and community source open educational resources. Uh, now that plug and play OER has gone basically mainstream, um, we have this wonderful opportunity to have or to leverage our school uh, community and also the students to create this next generation of OER. I'm really excited to see everyone here today. So I am Michael Weekman. I teach at Mountain Heights Academy. Um, we were formerly known as, so we were used to be called Open High School of Utah. So if you've heard of that, now we're Mountain Heights Academy. We're making that switch. Um, and I teach design classes and also fine art classes. So like painting and then also graphic design. So those two worlds is what I live in. Um, basically, our mission for Mountain Heights Academy, I just wanted to read that off because I think this is where a lot of things start from, is our mission statement. And then it goes from there. So our mission is to use innovative technology, service learning, student-centered instruction, and personal responsibility to empower our students to succeed. Um, we are very open. We create all of our courses as open content, and I'll let Ashley. Hey, so I'm just going to introduce myself really quickly. I ha I'm Ashley Webb. I've written six different courses for Mountain Heights Academy, all using open educational resources. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, of how we can uh, really utilize and tap into what using these open educational resources means and how we can take that to the next level and utilizing our community to help us create these resources. So, put a fishing pole up there because as educators we need to stop giving our students fish. Fish representing information and we need to teach them how to become fishermen, fisherwomen of that information. We need to take them and put them in the driver's seat. Um, basically, if we're just giving them the information that they can pull up on their device, or basically telling them you can't use the internet to research this, well, what's going to happen when they're actually in a work setting or something like that? They're probably just going to Google it. So we need to train them how to answer those bigger questions. And that's what we're going to talk about with this next generation of OER. Um, so as next generation OER, it's all about that next level of student engagement. It's all about making sure that the students become great fishermen. I'm sure you've all heard the Chinese proverb that if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but if you teach a man a fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. That's what we're talking about. Teaching our students how to take the power and take the seat of someone who's actually doing the research, who's actually creating what they're learning about. Okay, so we know, because we're at Open Ed, right, that OER are uh, free, freely accessible, being able to re, uh, use, revise, remix, and redistribute, right? So if we have access to that kind of curriculum, um, it sounds great, right? Uh, we sure think so at our school, but if we have all of these opportunities that OER gives us, then why do we present our content to our students in the exact same way? And this was actually an interesting blog post that uh, Dr. Wiley posted about uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, he talked about, he said, the question becomes then, what is the relationship between these additional capabilities and what we know about effective teaching and learning, and how can we revise our pedagogy based on this fact? So. I want to talk a little bit about Kickstarter. I know you, uh, a lot of you have probably heard about Kickstarter. What this is, is, is it's a crowdfunding site where you've got this great idea for a campaign or a project. Another one like it is Indiegogo. And you can go there and post your idea and then people come and they give you money. And they, they like your idea and they invest in you. So this is what I kind of think crowdfunding looks like uh, as a general infographic. Well, we like to think of um, next generation OER sort of like crowdfunding, but instead of getting money from people, you're getting their knowledge. So you're not having to write it all yourself, right? So, um, let's see here. 
So next generation OER, what we've defined that is, is OER that is assembled and used by the community with the teacher as a guide. And that's kind of the important part that we want to focus on right at the bottom there, with the teacher as a guide. Um, you know, with just the community, you'll, you'll have a lot of quality concerns. So you want to have a content master set up in place to kind of vet some of that OER so that um, you're not releasing a bunch of uh, excess to the world, as it were. And that's already out there. So here's, here's an infographic that we've created about traditional OER versus next-gen OER. This is kind of what we see as the traditional OER route, where it starts with an educator who then creates or remixes OER for a lesson. Then you kind of get in a loop here where you teach the lesson with the OER resources or you release the OER and that kind of goes in a loop and that goes out to the world. But after you teach a lesson to your students and your students graduate or they leave your class or move on to the next thing, um, that learning process uh, with those open education resources stops right there in its tracks. So with uh, next-gen OER, with this term that we've been throwing around a lot, we see it a little bit more like this, where an educator is more of an OER facilitator, like I said, a content master. And then the community creates OER either from scratch or remixes existing OER. And that happens for a while in a, a sort of infinite loop there. The teacher then acts as that content master, filters it, releases it, and then uh, and the world receives it there. So as you can see up here, the learning process is really taking place up at the top level. So I liked this, uh, this picture I found. Uh, the, teach, the learner is really becoming the teacher um, in this aspect. So why take the time and the effort to put our students in the driver's seat? Um, why crowdsource this OER and be, create it as next generation OER? Um, student engagement is the number one thing. You know, we talk a lot about creating of content, but the biggest thing is the students who are receiving the content and receiving it and perceiving it and understanding it. So through student engagement, um, because if they're the ones creating it, they have to understand it in order to be able to create it. Um, the constructivist theory, uh, learning is an active process in which learners construct new ideas or concepts based upon their current and past knowledge. Uh, we need to ask our students to figure out the big questions and have them kind of go through the process in order to construct the actual resource. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about this image. So basically, we learn what we have perceived and done. So if you failed before, you're probably going to understand not to do that. I have fallen off scaffolding before as I was painting the house and it's like, the road runner who's like running and then there's no more you know things below him. Uh, yeah so that was me so I actually had a student create this image to demonstrate that and I never fell off scaffolding again and I never will because I learned from that experience <laughs> and that's this general idea that we're talking about here that students will learn from their experiences and their past and current knowledge um, Dewey talks about how he believes that students should be involved in real life real life tasks and challenges. That's a very important, I think. You know, to give your students certain things that they'll actually have to deal with in the real world. And answering big questions is a big way to do that. Um, cooperative learning is another thing and another great reason to um, use next generation OER. So in cooperative learning, students have to work in groups and they have to go towards an academic goal and the goals can be based off of standards and things like that. You know, you, you can use your standards as your baseline and then go from there. Um, I, you know, I'm very into the arts. I visually can represent things to people. And if you're a cooperatively learning thing, you know, if you're using a cooperative learning group, you can access your students' strengths. So if you put me with someone that's maybe more mathematical, then you can actually have this great group where in the normal educational system, I think it's very competitive in nature. So I could really do great visual things, but I can't necessarily maybe do the other end of things. So if you work in groups and have your students create open educational resources in groups, you can have that next generation level of engagement. So everyone succeeds when the group succeeds. In this image of the chicken crossing the roads, unless all of these chickens cross the road, this is going to be a pretty sad image. So let's say a car was coming, 
it wouldn't be a very happy image. Everyone succeeds when the group succeeds. So when all these chickens make it across the road, it's a great image. That's what we need to do in our classroom. We need to have our students work together to succeed. Um, with limited um, awesome open educational resources out there, we can have our students be the ones and the community be the ones creating that those awesome resources. Um, so basically our students can create materials and they're not not only using these materials that are directly related to the standards, but they understand what their culture is into. So as an educator, I don't have to worry so much about being with the times, because if the students are creating it, they're gonna know what engages the other students. They're gonna know what's that crazy YouTube video that I can't <coughs> keep track of, and they're gonna be able to include that in the resource or create one that's kind of like it. Um, they're going to need to build rather than just recite information. So what are some of the teacher's benefits? Uh, I wanted to do a quote here from Dr. David Wiley who says, in regards to open educational resources, because any one of these remixes might end up helping next semester's students finally grasp that concept that has proven so difficult. Now if the students in this next generation OER are, are the ones creating it, not only is next semester's class going to benefit from it and get that aha moment, which is the biggest teacher benefit, but the current students who are actually creating the material are going to have that aha moment because they're going to figure it out. Um, a couple more benefits. Lesson prep time is reduced. It saves time and energy, basically. So there's always going to be some sort of a hammock that you can sit in and prepare for class. Uh, the material is the best it can be. It improves every year. How awesome is that? As a teacher, you can believe that your material is getting better. Uh, Multi-year research projects. This is what I want to talk about just for a second. So as you're doing research projects in your class, what happens to them? Usually you have a list of you know, research topics, and let's say for me, art history, a bunch of artists, the students have to research them. And then they bring them home or put them on their fridge or digitally save them. Um, then it's done. What if the students were taking that research project that all your students do for all these different classes, and then they save them openly as open educational resources? Then the next group of students, or even students in the same class, can sh pass them, share them, and work upon it. So it's you know 200 words and a couple images. The next student grabs it, creates another 100 words, revises what the first student did, and adds three more images. The next student grabs it, creates a video with it. And then you have this awesome resource, and then the teacher takes it and posts it online as an open educational research resource. Sorry. What are some of the course benefits? So the biggest benefit here is the students will be shocked how awesome your course is. And that's, that's something that actually stu two students created these, because I wanted a logo for Next Generation OER, and I didn't have the time to create it. So I had a student create it, and then they posted it online as an open educational resource. Uh, same thing with the picture. Ashley's student took a picture of herself showing, being shocked because we couldn't find anything online. Um, it's the best resources in the end, and that's the most important thing. Our students can create amazing things, so let's let them. Students can get to projects that you as a teacher would not be able to get to for years. Basically, you know, you have all this long list of how you, know, you can make your course better, but students can actually do that today so that students can benefit from it tomorrow. Moving on to, here's just an image. I wanted to talk just a second. Um, this is a video that we had our students create and it'll be on the handout in the end. Um, so you can watch that and you can actually hear the students talking about their process of creating Next Generation OER. It's really wonderful to hear what they have to say. And it was crazy because we just asked them questions and they like gave us these incredible answers about everything we're talking about today, how it was just right on with what they were perceiving. But there's also a quote here from Dr. David Wiley who says, because students know their work will be used both by their peers and potentially the future generation of students, they invest uh, more in their work at a different level. So because students know that this work's gonna be posted, they're gonna do their absolute best because they want their fellow classmates to see their work, that's awesome. So, actually, we'll talk a little more. Okay, we're gonna hurry and give you some ideas of everything, it's okay, 
everything that we've been talking about. I'm going to give you the link to uh, some of these at the end of the presentation. Um, but what does next gen OER look like? Um, I think this is the practical portion of this presentation. This is a, an open textbook by Dr. David Wiley's Project Management for Instructional Designers class. And basically what they do every year for the project is they revise and remix this open textbook that they have. So one year people add pictures, one year people add MP3 um, listening versions of it or, or other sorts of uh, projects in addition to that. This textbook, uh, the Utah science textbooks are written by groups of science teachers. There's an open educational initiative there where groups of these content master science teachers get together and write these textbooks and then every year they keep notes on what they need to improve and then they re-release those. This is the Mathematics Vision Project and this is just another way that um, these math teachers have gotten together and uh, coll really collaborated as a community and then written the secondary math one and two curriculum through the Mathematics Vision Project. At our school we're doing a couple cool things with open educational resources this next generation. We actually have community members come in and record videos for this digital career library. So they record videos of what their jobs are. And our counselors use this to instruct our students when they say, I want to be you know, a doctor. And then we can actually have them look and have a doctor talking with them about what the qualifications are, what the salary is like, how much school you actually have to go through. So if you don't like school, it's going to be a long road. So then they can see all these cool digital career library um, resources. I'm also, and our school's working on this virtual field trip library. So this is, I actually have some students working on it, so that it will be next generation OER. So as our students go out into these cool places, we're going to have them take video and create these virtual field trips all over. And all this stuff is open, and it'll be shared freely, rather than having to pay for this virtual career, or virtual library um, of field trips that's costly. Um, Moving on to the OER Commons. Okay, so we have an amazing English teacher at our school, um, Sarah Layton, she was here a few years ago. She creates portfolio templates within the open author editor within OER Commons, and then invites her top students to upload their projects to the OER Commons where they are then um, reviewed and uploaded to the site there. So we thought that was a great use of next gen <coughs> OER. This is something that I've been doing in my class. I teach photography, computer tech, tech tools, those types of classes. So right now I've been having my students release their photos as OER via Flickr through my classes because I don't know if you've ever written an online uh, curriculum, but the CC licensed photos that are out there sometimes are a little lacky. And so I've encouraged my students to uh, release their photography as uh, Creative Commons licensed photos that I can then use in my class to help beef up the portions that I feel like are a little bit lacking in my class. Um, this is another thing that I do for my classes. Every year I have a TA, and my TA improves upon the notes that they take each year for my students that I um, provide notes to for their modification plan. So everything in black is my first year TA. Everything in purple was added by my TA this year. And she's gone through the notes and then added her own photography to those notes to help revise those and, uh, and make those better every year. Um, I really like those notes. I, I've gotten a lot of good feedback from my students um, in that class. This is another thing that I've been doing in my classes. I have a forum where I make students, I require them to ask a question and then answer a question. Then I have my TA go through and put it all on a Google Doc for me, copy paste everything in so that it looks nice and pretty for me because that's the way that I am. And, uh, and so then I've got all this information that's already written out. Um, my TA takes out and throws out all the junk or anything that's duplicated or not correct. And, uh, and here I can see the deficits in my teaching. I can see I've got a place where I can start to create something. It's so much easier to have a starting place of where you need to know, where you need to make something versus uh, starting from scratch in the OER arena. And uh, another thing that I have my TAs help me with is creating student create creating student-created learning materials. So my TAs will create games for me, they'll create review presentations. This is just an example of student-created OER. I upload these in my course, bam, I didn't have to do anything except maybe fix some punctuation that wasn't very good. And, uh, and this is stuff that I really didn't have to do very much work to do, so it's been an amazing um, aspect of my courses. 
Uh, this is just a survey I did of those review games that I posted in my course. Uh, I just did this survey last week at the end of my quarter. <coughs> did you play the review games? Uh, you know, only 4.4% said no, they didn't. Did the review games help you? 89% said they did. And this was a survey of 160 students in my Type Tools class. So I felt like that was some eye-opening data for me that um, doing something correctly <coughs> with those review games and having my TA help. Here are some examples of how our students can have their work shown. So we take the kind of best work that's out there, so the best work our students create, and we'll usually use them as examples in our class. <coughs> so in order for me to go through and create this minion out of text, it would take hours and hours and hours where the student does it, and it's a great example, and it's fun to see the correlation with the quality of examples I use in my class and the quality of work that gets turned in. The better the examples, the more the course goes up. So for this hand drawing, I was trying to have my students who were 7th and 8th graders create great hand drawings. The first one are a bunch of turkey hands. And then I take the couple students who did really great the first couple times, I post them for the next couple weeks, and then I have all these awesome hand drawings rather than the classic turkey hand. <laughs> How do we know what are the good cookies? Well, as a, a teacher, and you always have to have that content master being usually the one who's in charge of publishing the material. So you don't want, because we understand that our students aren't content masters, they're students, you gotta make sure as a teacher, you're the one who is kind of filtering it through and making sure that we don't overpopulate that um, database of open educational resources. Uh, what is the future of next generation OER? This is what I'm so excited about, because there's a lot of people in this room that have great ideas about how this can fit for their own situation. So, we're excited to have you take part. And we're gonna give you this at the end, but basically there's a doc there that you can go to and add your own ideas of how this can benefit each different um, subject matter or content area. So this is a collaborative doc that we have where we've listed each uh, subject area for um, certain education types, and you don't see yours on there, added on. And we've gotten a lot of just brainstorming ideas of what this could look like since this is kind of a new-ish concept, um, we thought it'd be nice to crowdsource uh, some ideas. So feel free to go to that doc, add your ideas, uh, take some of your own, implement. So if you want to get involved in this, if you've got time, which as teachers and educators you probably don't have a lot of, you know, implement some next-gen OER, share your successes and failures, maybe create a virtual field trip video, our handout link that we'll give you at the end, which is different than that brainstorming document that I just sent, um, has instructions on how to create a virtual field trip video. You've only got a little time now. Uh, you could create a video for our open source library for careers, which we have instructions on there as well. Uh, brainstorm ideas on that brainstorming doc, or just uh, take some pictures up here in Park City and CC license them and upload them so that we can uh, all contribute a little bit more to that. So this is the link to our handout, which is different than the brainstorming document. It's got all those links on it that I just mentioned. Here's a QR code if you're lazy, you don't want to write it out. And uh, thank you so much for hearing us today, and we'd love to answer any questions. Yes? I just have a quick question. Yes, it's more of a procedural question. Since you're dealing with uh, student-created material for minors, do you have some sort of like parent permission slip or some sort of process that you use to allow them to, you know, can they go ahead and put an open license on their work? Is that even something that's come up? That's a good question. I like that question. Um, you, know, <laughs> you know, we're not really having students put any of their identity really into the work or their face or even their name into the work. So, and we do ask for permission for the students that uh, we do, when we do release with our courses, we ask for their permission. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that we have done, but I haven't I, we're, just kind of, we're, we're, we're having oh. a lot of those issues come up where, Absolutely. you know, ostensibly students uh, probably right on, on their work. And, and as a minor, are they able to openly license it? Good question. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, any other questions? We would love to talk about more of these ideas and things like that. So we'll take things in the back. Oh, yes, question. Just a quick question. Thank you for your presentation. Oh. Um, is there, in your school, um, is there a place where all of these incredible, I mean, in addition to the um, OERs, created by students being out there in the world on Flickr, et cetera. Is there a place, sort of repository within the school or someplace where other students can access what students have done? 
Um, or what teachers can access? Not specifically what students have done, but we release all of our courses and curriculum online. So go to our website, mountainheightsacademy.org. You can download <coughs> all of our courses at our school. Yes. Is there any type of uh, special assessment type materials you'd have to come across if the students are making some of this material? Is the, our school that I teach at right now, or our administration is more interested with assessment of your assessments and sometimes the whole learning process. Uh, just how did you assess if the student, like you were mentioning with you when you fell off the thing, you learned a lot from that. The students who fail at what they do, how is there some way that they can I, I kind of understand what you're saying. Well, I think the big thing is like having this as a as part of your course. You know, you still have tests and you right. still have things like that, and this is projects, and you have this great relationship between everything. So, you know, when it comes to the assessments, I always like, you know, they still have to do all the work and the procedures to create it, and that's, you know, there's a rubric and things like that, but then there's always the test that goes along with all the materials. But do you have anything that can showcase or anything existing? that can showcase how well it's working or not working in the class? Or is that something that you'd be developing? Well, I mean, this is relatively new. We just started yeah. doing that this year. Okay. And so, um, you know, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll come back at you next open ed with more data. So. Oh, that's cool. I used to watch the student video. It's, it's yeah. fun to see, because the students that have been a part of it really do say it. We need to wrap it up, but lunch is afterwards, so you guys are welcome to hang out here for a few minutes or ask some more questions, but thank you very much.